Yo, what's cracking? This your homeboy Ice Cube, and you tuned in to Everything Snowboarding and More podcast. You know what it is, baby. Hey, everybody, this is Mike with the Mountain Weekly News. Welcome back to episode number 42 of the Everything Snowboarding and More podcast. This week's episode is being brought to you by Alec Wireless Helmet Audio Communications. If you've ever been on the mountain with people and lost them, or looking for a cool push to talk comms way to connect with one another, a cool app, definitely check out Alec Go. A L E C K dot I O. This week's guest is Bryce Phillips. Bryce is the founder of Evo.com, one of the largest online retailers for everything action sports, and now home to some great brick and mortar stores across the United States. So let's go ahead and kick off the interview with Bryce. This week's guest is Bryce Phillips. Bryce is the founder of Evo.com. Bryce has a lot to say about kind of online, retail, brick and mortar, and just the ski and snowboard industry as a whole. Bryce, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for having me. So kind of tell us your backstory. I know some of the other, you know, retailers kind of started out, you know, in their basement or in their garage. How did Evo come to life? Well, you know, in, in it really is the story of like my childhood because long before Evo existed, I was introduced to skiing and, you know, that just created such a spark, you know, for me, I was just like so inspired to be able to participate. And, but to be able to participate for me, I had to figure out how to pay for it. So I've been buying and selling gear and a whole bunch of other things, you know, baseball cards, cars, car stereos, all of it ever since I was a little kid, but uh, really kind of the fast forward, I went to school in Seattle and I was introduced to eBay in the late nineties and I was living between Seattle and Whistler and I started selling skis in I think 97 online out of my garage while living, you know, again, between the two places. And um, that kind of continued to grow. And then eventually in 2001 launched the first ever website again, out of my garage in Seattle, uh, evogear.com. So that's kind of the, the very quick genesis, uh, there's a lot of chapters in between, but that's really kind of the start. And then of course, it's evolved from there in 2005, opened our first store. And that was a big turning point just because it really established the, um, you know, so much of what we're about, which is like really creating a place for the community. Uh, and so since then we've, you know, kind of gone on a bit of a run, but we're officially 20 years old, although kind of unofficially given the origins of the business, uh, much older than that. Definitely. And you kind of mentioned like the, the philosophy of the company, Evo gives back. Kind of tell us about that. And like, what are, what are some of the programs that you guys are doing? I would say that the kind of the origins of, of that really kind of uh, are a reflection of my childhood and some things that I saw through close friends of mine who really were dealt a very, very tough hand. And um, in seeing that, it always kind of inspired me to think about, hey, how can I leverage like what I do and the business ultimately that I grow and the people I work with? How can we all work together to kind of make sure that our efforts are not single threaded or dealt with like really about like, you know, how can we have an impact on the community, a positive impact on the community? So we do a whole number of things and specific to working with organizations that serve underserved youth. That's really our primary focus. So anywhere from working with SOS, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, the service board, you know, nonprofits, large and small, volunteering our own hours, kind of giving in the way of um, kind of with our financial resources. There's a wide range of things we do, but we're happy about that. We're excited about kind of the ways that we've been able to kind of grow what we do with regards to community impact. But we also feel like we're just absolutely tip of the iceberg. And in the years to come, we want to continue to really emphasize like that opportunity and, and, and not just give of our own, but like make sure we can leverage our reach and bringing our customers and our vendors and everybody else into the fold to give with us. Great. And, and you mentioned that, you know, your, your background was in ski and, and you started selling skis on Evo. I think most of our listeners are going to be familiar with Evo, especially from the winter sports side of things. You know, it was for so long. And then recently, um, as we talk about mountain bikes and, and summer stuff, I'm seeing lots of opportunities to work with Evo. What kind of was the emphasis for you guys to kind of move into some of the other categories, you know, not away from skiing, but kind of being more inclusive to the other sports? Yeah, skiing and snowboarding, you know, to your point, was definitely kind of the, the foundation when it came to the categories that we were in. We've actually been in wake for a long time, too. But to answer your question, yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been you, know, you know, a good few years now, but surf, skate camp and definitely mountain bike. I mean, mountain bike is like the, 
is surging in a way that, yeah, it's, it's, it's really having a major impact on the business. And really where it came from is the fact that we just, we love to participate, you know, and uh, mountain biking specifically, we have such a passionate group of riders and have long before we actually had the category as part of our business. And so it just made perfect sense. It, we kind of, it's kind of funny that we waited as long as we did, but when we went for it, we really stepped on the gas and it's just really neat to see the way in which it's played out across our stores, on our website, with our team, with our customers. You know, I just, I'm personally super inspired by that sport. Like I started Evo while living in Whistler and in many ways, kind of the modern, you know, or what we would think of as today as mountain biking, so much of it is influenced by Whistler and the sea to sky. So there's a whole bunch of different factors, but I would say really it came from a place of passion. And it's really nice that it's like, you know, rounding out our business from a seasonal perspective. And just, again, it's just an inspiration. It's because it's so much fun to participate ourselves. For sure. And it seems like once people get to Evo, whether it's on the website or into the store, you've got so much going on. What's the new travel component? We just recently did a story about a new lodge you guys were opening up in BC. I know that you guys have kind of been doing this for a while. Kind of tell us about that and uh, how that came about. Yeah. So, you know, Evo Trip, which is the adventure travel business, we actually launched that in, um, you know, over 10 years ago. So 2009. So that's been something we've done. It's been a, it's been something we've really cared about. I mean, again, so much of this business is based on travel participation, the culture, you know, the human connection and these really amazing places. So that, that's been something we've done for a while, but more recently we've really looked to kind of broaden our offering and, and bring to life an incredibly like just compelling and engaging suite of experiences that go beyond the things we've done historically. So specifically what that looks like is, you know, we just acquired a, a really, really amazing um, backcountry lodge between Squamish and Whistler in the Callahan region. It's called the Journeyman Lodge. So that's something that we've added to our offering and we'll be able to stitch together retail, rental, travel, education, and of course, lodging and hospitality. That's all, you know, all intersects with this move. And then another one that's related yet yet quite different is we're about to open a project called Campus Salt Lake. And um, in that project, it, phase one is 100,000 square feet of existing kind of historic brick buildings. And we're repurposing those spaces. We'll have an Evo flagship store, all together skate park. So we have a skate park in Seattle. Now we'll have a second one in Salt Lake. We're going to have a 50 key uh, hotel. So 50 room hotel, Evo hotel. Uh, in addition to that, businesses that are not ours, but are part of the family, the uh, bouldering project, so Salt Lake bouldering project, there'll be a, almost a 30,000 foot bouldering gym there. Level nine, so L9 Sports, uh, that's a, it's a great Utah-based uh, outdoor retailer, a restaurant and a couple other concepts. But all in, you really have this, you know, again, this like some of its parts kind of scenario where you got, uh, you know, a lot of different concepts that have gravity, but together is exponential. So yeah, we're opening that. It's going to start opening in the coming weeks, and then we'll be fully open by probably March of uh, 22. Wow, congratulations. Uh, for everyone in Salt Lake, you'll definitely have to go check that out. Let's see what else well, we got here. So what about Avalanche Education? I spend, you know, I'm, I've got my Avi 3. We, for the most part, really focus on split boarding. I do a lot of guiding here in the Tetons. One of the things I've been trying to get the industry to do, and I don't even know if it's possible, would be if, you know, you buy a split board from, you know, say Evo, there's a hundred dollars off to your first level one avalanche course with Airy or something of that nature. Sometimes I feel really irresponsible just telling people like, hey, here's all the gear. When I teach avalanche courses, you know, we have people show up with everything, you know, airbag, beacon, everything ready to go, but they really have no, they haven't taken that class yet. And then here in the Tetons, most of the classes are already sold out for this coming winter. And that's something that's really tough because, you know, we have so many new users that are getting into these sports and people moving to the, the mountains. And then, you know, with the way that the resorts have changed, kind of with the collective passes, I think a lot of people are looking to kind of push out and, you know, go ride the powder and, and the stuff that they're actually starting to see, you know, less of the, the park type riding. And, um, you know, is that something that you guys could do or how do you, you know, what's, what's Evo's take on the avalanche side of things? Yeah, no, I think it's all great points. So it's like one thing to get the gear, but it's like, you know, it's totally irresponsible to not actually provide some level of education and point people in the right direction. Um, something we've done that we're really excited about, if you go to our site and you go to the Evo Hub link in the top navigation on the homepage of the site or any, anywhere on the site, you can go into Evo Academy. And so Evo Academy, we've got a whole bunch of content. We partner with Altus Mountain Guides. It's out of the Sea of the Sky, out of Whistler and Squamish. 
we partner with them with, so we have, you know, backcountry kind of video tutorials, um, a whole bunch of content that is this tip of the iceberg, right? There's all, like, it never ends. You've got your, you know, your Abbey three, but this is at least kind of starts to get people moving in the right direction. And then also sharing resources with where they can get like a, you know, a deeper level of, of just education around kind of backcountry safety. So, yeah, I think we, you know, we were looking to do our part. I think we're excited to do more. That's a new, uh, we introduced that last year and we're really happy about the fact that like we have a fair bit of really good kind of basic and, you know, getting people started kind of backcountry education, knowing of course that getting into the field, getting the right guide and really just immersing yourself on the, uh, when it comes to kind of learning kind of best practices, like all of that has to follow, but at least that's a bridge into kind of moving down that path. That's incredibly responsible that Evo's doing that. I, I really like that. We kind of talked a little bit with COVID this year or the last couple of years. How has that kind of impacted, you know, business both online and uh, for your brick and mortars? Well, great question. <laughs> I, uh, it's, I, I still even every time I ha- like I'm on this topic, it still kind of blows me away because I'm thinking back to March of 20 and kind of the way we were thinking about what was going to play out. But Thankfully, I and we as a team got it all wrong, meaning, you know, we really felt like there was going to be a very, very tough, you know, chapter ahead. And, 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 and by the way, it has been really tough in a lot of ways. But from a business perspective, it was a little, little bit of a lurch or a lull there for a month or two. And then it really started to feel like tailwinds because of this, the light that it clearly, the, this time clearly shined on the importance of being outside. So we saw a major surge. I mean, we had our stores closed, you know, we did all kinds of things to batten down the hatches. Like it was just so many unknowns, especially at the beginning um, when COVID was first kind of upon us, but we started making our way back to opening with certain protocols, obviously shipping online and operating our DC in a certain way. And yeah, we, I'm really proud of like, well, I'm just super proud of the team. I mean, it was been a really, really tough chapter just given this like COVID and all of the other kind of um, ways in which that's played out. But super rewarding because while we got into a kind of a defensive position, we also moved quickly to, you know, get in, you know, start playing offense when it was clear that the market was like hungry to just to really just get outside. So I I just see it as a massive silver lining. I think that, you know, it's, I just, I don't know if it's ever been more critical for humans just to be in the outdoors and immerse themselves in the activities that kind of we all love and whatever, whether that be like, walking on a, you know, on a, on a mellow trail to going deep into the back country, everything in between, it's just so important to human health and wellness. And so that combination of being outside and human connection and our, our part in helping facilitate that, like that's definitely an inspiration and, and oh yeah, by the way, it, it's thankfully it has driven like really good results on the business front. Again, far beyond what I ever would have thought was possible. So very thankful for that for sure. Definitely. And, you know, you had mentioned uh, March of 20. Uh, during that time, I had um, companies that were still wanting to send us packages. And that's when we believed that COVID or coronavirus could live on cardboard surfaces for a certain amount of time. Totally, totally. I almost forgot. Like, we just didn't know. I mean, it's such a new new world, right? It totally was. And, you know, so I, I felt it was going to be really irresponsible for me to have, you know, so many people touching these boxes, you know, somebody shipping it, you know, the FedEx guys, you know, coming here to the office. So, we went about two months of just not doing any business. And I was like, gosh, what am I going to do? And then last year, we ended up finishing the year. We drove about $600,000 in affiliate sales. And that was way up from the year before. And I thought, holy cow, like the one thing that we're kind of seeing right now, and I wanted to talk to you because you probably have a good insight, is supply chain issues. And some of the brands that we've worked with for a long, long time basically just said, hey, we don't have product. We don't have product to send to our own team. I think there was one company that I had heard, I believe it was Flylo, that when everybody was kind of cutting down on their orders and how much they were going to actually make for the year, Flylo kind of doubled down. And so the the rumor is that he ran through all his stuff and when nobody else had inventory, he was just selling selling jackets and selling bibs. Uh, yeah, I haven't talked to Dan about that. He's, a, he's an awesome guy and a friend. Um, I hope that's what happened. That's, I love that story. He, he's the only guy that got it right. The rest of us were like trying to figure out how to out of flush inventory. Yeah. So to answer your question about supply chain, I'd just say it's a mixed bag, right? Like there's areas that are, that where the fallout is far more pronounced and, you know, I mean, wetsuits are super tough, definitely, you know, certain 
you know, I mean, bike has been tough just given the componentry and all the different places that, that, the, that the supply chain, the supply chains, you know, across a number of different components, like all have to come together to make one bike. So there are different examples and different outcomes. Thankfully, like by and large across our various categories and then kind of on net or kind of across the business, we've ended up in a pretty good position. Again, we are chasing inventory like crazy. The inventory turns are higher than normal. Margins are good because there's definitely some scarcity and, and there's consumers understand it's time to, if you want something, you better grab it because they're seeing that across, you know, pretty much everything, not just in our industry, but it really hasn't put us like fully on our heels. And um, uh, yeah, I think we're, we're, we're like, continue to be cautiously optimistic because we we do know that we're not out of this, right? Like any anyone I talk to that run the brands are all like, you know, we, you know, just do not know kind of like, we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel yet because there's still going to be plenty of kind of ripples in the supply chain that are going to play out and ultimately like, you know, create some, some pain. I would say again, if we, if we look at the business as a whole, it has like taken us through our knees, you know, um, thankfully. And yeah, we're just fortunate to have such good vendor relationships where if there's a shipping issue or whatever it may be, like, you know, we can get around the table and figure out how to, you know, create the best case possible. Yeah. And and you mentioned that, you know, the consumers are starting to get smarter. I was just talking to the landlord in the building that I rent and he said, oh, you know, I ordered my mountain bike in November and it came in March. And I thought, okay, that's kind of, you know, the process. Um, I think even the administration as a whole was saying, hey, like, if there's stuff that you want for the holidays, like you might want to. <laughs> strike. Yeah. Like don't, don't just wait till the last minute. I was just out in California on a surf trip and there was 47 ships waiting to dock at the Long Beach Harbor. We have a container in one of those ships and they've got our, they got our fixtures for Salt Lake. So <laughs> if I knew you were there, I'd have you swim out and start looking in containers to see if you could find them. We don't know where the heck they are. No, for sure. And my, my friend runs Buell wetsuits and he said, we have 7,000 wetsuits out there that I can't even get right now. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, that's a real thing. There's no doubt. I mean, like, again, our, our one kind of real live example right now is we have our fixturing for our new store, and we just don't know when we're going to get it. Like, it's sitting out there on one of those containers, but one of those containers. So it's it, there's some head scratchers for sure. But, I, you know, I think we'll work through it. I know we'll know we'll work through it. And I just hope, I really hope that, it, you know, it, it's not so dire for some of these great brands that have great products with a lot of demand and doesn't fully, like, you know, doesn't create too much pain. I know that it is in certain circumstances, but... Thankfully, what we do have during this time is also a surge in demand. So, you know, there's there's some, it's a moving target. You got to be quick on your feet. And um, I think that's one theme for us that's really served us well is this that agility, knowing that, hey, you know, things are changing day in, day out. Let's not be complacent. And that's that's been um, a real theme and something that um, I think is, for those who are paralyzed during a time like this, like it's 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 much more difficult to kind of, kind of get through it all. So, yeah, it's a... Definitely a, been a bit of a wild ride. All right. A couple more questions. What's the future of Evo look like? I mean, you just mentioned the campus. Do you see more retail brick and mortar stores? Oh, hundred percent. I mean, we've always believed in the, the 3D experience is just so special and different. Now it doesn't, it, not always, right. You can just throw together a store and try to sell stuff and it doesn't need to be special, but our emphasis on that experience and the way we look to kind of differentiate that experience, like, we're very bullish. We always have been, even when people thought there was going to be no more brick and mortar ever, right? I had people definitely tell me that and assume that was going to be the case. Well, now we know that's not the case. So we love the fact that the web business is strong and growing and that we feel pretty balanced when it comes to the way the channels, you know, are focused on these different channels, but it's not one without the other, you know? I mean, the, the way in which the web drives the store, the store drives the web, it's pretty remarkable. And to answer your question about the future, you know, it's not only retail, right? Like we love the, you know, this, we have this core retail business that's healthy and growing and something that we've been at for 20 years, but we've started to layer in these new experiences that we feel will really round out kind of our offering when it comes to our customers. And we want to ultimately want to kind of provide a suite of experiences like that you can, that are totally unique, you know, when we think about what's out there or when what's not out there for that matter. And, uh, you know, to add to that, you know, so Journeyman, right, the the lodge that we now own in BC, the campus project, those are examples of that altogether. Skate park, Evo trip. Yeah, we, we definitely have kind of global ambitions. And so we think about the combination of web and these 3D experiences. You know, we just we're looking through a forever lens and um, that like, kind of gives us the opportunity to think big. So 
kind of continuing to build our, our global footprint and deliver experiences like no other, like that's really super inspiring for all of us. And that's what the that's what we think the future looks like. Yeah, it definitely seems like Evo as a brand is very, you know, inspirational. I love when I can send uh, my readers to your website because I know that they're in really good hands. You know, they're going to they're going to see the stuff, uh, the way that you guys talk about the products. You know, you actually have people that are, you know, like you said, are passionate, you know, whether it's a mountain biker or a skier or a splitboarder. I'm glad you mentioned Journeyman Lodge because I kind of wanted to wrap it up with what are some of your favorite places that you've traveled to? And feel free to plug the Evo places. I love, you know, going up to the Pacific Northwest. I mean, I live here in Jackson, but I tell people all the time, I'm like, you got to go up to Baker. You got to go check out those places because it's it's just such a different experience if you hadn't uh, done that before. Yeah, no, gosh, like, where do I start? There's so many just extraordinary places around the world. But yeah, if, I, if I'm going to if I'm going to narrow it down to snow and go with the short list, like here, here's the list for me. I'll start with Japan. Japan, there's a lot of excitement uh, around Japan. It's all for a very good reason. Like it's a truly special place. Sure, the deep, cold snow is incredible. But in addition to all that, it's like the people, the culture, you know, the food, just the entire experience. Like I just love going to Japan. I've been going there for a long time and have really great friends out there. And just, I've just had some really special trips to, to Japan. So I, I start with Japan. You know, the, the Alps and, you know, the Alps are obviously expansive. There's all kinds of great places, but there's just nothing like them. You know, they're just, again, very, very unique experience. If you love uh, the mountain kind of culture and you love to ski and snowboard, the Alps are uh, a must-see, must-visit. And there are a whole bunch of great places, many of which are unknown, right? There's like the big, there's the Verbiers of the world and Chamonix and others, but there's so many unknown places that are just so yeah there's just this like so much terrain and so much to explore so they're on the short list you know you can't leave out alaska alaska is extraordinary right for so many reasons but it's just very just so different big huge ramps you know all the things you see in the movies and the thing though that that is really cool about alaska it's not just what you see in the movies like you know racing your slough jumping over a massive brook run just trying to survive like there's just rolling great you know medium grade terrain or as far as like steepness that is just a ton of fun and very different so alas is on the list and then you know there are a bunch of others that i'm going to miss but then i, I kind of end it with like bc as a whole you know interior obviously down to, out to the coast i spent seven years living in whistler you know life-changing experience and just you know couldn't say enough about that experience and then i get sorry i, I have to add one more because i was gonna i was gonna miss it i should have never missed this one but all, I really love South America as a whole, but I got to say Las Lenas, Argentina is is off the charts, as is uh, Termas de Chion or Nevados de Chion and Ch on the Chilean side. So, you know, you got the Southern Hemisphere, you got, you know, East in, in Asia, North America, and then the Alps. So those, that's, that's my short list. Wow, that is uh, one heck of a bucket list. You know, I had the I was fortunate enough to go up to Haynes for a few years. and uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, Haynes is probably the, I, for me personally, like, I've everywhere I've been in Alaska has been a great, but Haynes for me has has truly really been the pinnacle, you know. And that's that's the winter list. So maybe on the next one we'll talk about uh, mountain biking and surfing and other stuff. But <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one for now, I think. I love it. Well, uh, I like I like how we wrapped it up. And uh, best of luck with everything you guys are doing. I mean, it's just been so so rad to watch the brand grow. And then when you guys started open the the brick and mortars, I was like, oh, these guys are here to stay. And even at that time, that's kind of when everyone was like, oh no, everything's switching to online. And so it was like, okay, like they're taking a different approach. And like you said, you had heard it personally. And then to see that growing and then just expanding into all this different stuff, the campus, the travel, uh, obviously you guys are onto something and it's, it's legitimate. You know, again, people, they get inspired when they come to Evo and yeah, the more programs and the more things that you can, you know, kind of, you know, once they come to my website, we hold their hand and we pass them off to you guys. And then at that point it's like, oh, cool. They're, they're in good hands. Awesome. Man. Well, I truly appreciate all the kind words and feel just incredibly fortunate. You know, I, I, uh, this is like the lifestyle, the, the activities, the people, the culture, like, I just, I love all of it. And so the fact that we are able to build this thing together, you know, with a bunch of great folks, like it's just a lot of fun. So again, thanks. Thanks for the kind words and uh, thanks for having me on. Right on Bryce. Have a great day. All right. Take care. Thank you. 
And once again, we'd like to thank this week's sponsor, Alec Go. If you're looking for hi-fi audio, group location, push to calm talks, and much more, be sure to check these guys out. Really cool, integrates with your helmet, and uh, just a really cool Siri, Google, military grade encryption. This thing is badass. Universal helmet fit, alec.io.